Hello friends! I am so glad you're here. I'm really, really, really excited for this vlog. When I first started this vlog, I wasn't sure what it was going to be, but I think I'm going to do a new series on my channel. Like, the next few vlogs, unless you know, my mood changes, which is very possible. I kind of want to dip my toe into different genres of Christian fiction. I do have a nonfiction vlog coming out, but that's going to take me a while <laughs> to do, so that's coming. But for this vlog in particular, I'm going to be reading some Christian suspense slash mysteries. I don't fully know which books I'm going to be picking up right at this moment, but if it's not Christian, it's going to be clean. The first book that I am going to be reading is If I Run by Terry Blackstock. You'll see me looking like this here in a little bit in this vlog because I'm redoing the intro of this video. You know how it goes. All I knew at the beginning of this vlog was that it's following a woman named Casey. She is on the run because like right at the very beginning, you find out she has seen someone die or has been around someone who is dead. <laughs> She's trying to run because she knows who really did the killing. She doesn't believe that the police are going to believe her that she didn't actually do it, if that makes sense. Let's get into the vlog. I won't spoil my thoughts right now. Let's just get into it. So I am in the line to pick up my girl from school and I wanted to give you an update on if I run. I'm not going to keep holding it because I don't want people to realize that I'm recording in the school line. <laughs> but I really am liking it a lot. I think I'm like 20, 22% of the way in. I did end up finding the audiobook on Libby. The audiobook is really, really good. I'm really enjoying that. Caitlin recommended the audiobook to me, so I was like, okay, yes, ma'am. So, what I know about this so far, I did tell you that it's following a girl named Casey, or a woman named Casey. She is on the run. You know from the very beginning that she came upon her best friend's dead body. Her DNA is basically all over the scene. She doesn't even try to hide any of that. She just leaves and is on the run. She took a bus to Durant, Oklahoma. Well, it's to Tulsa, but she gets off at Durant, which, okie girls, shout out. <laughs> so she's there. She is trying to figure out what to do next, and I really like getting her perspective. I also really, really like the way this author is like weaving in little bits of faith. So Casey is like not into God really. She doesn't even know if he exists, but she does start praying because she's like desperate basically as one would be if you're on the run for supposed murder. She knows that she should have like called the police and told them what was going on, that she didn't do it, but she knows who did. But she doesn't have a lot of faith in the system and so she doesn't do that. The other perspective that we're getting in this book is a man named Dylan. He was in the military and he has come home because he was honorably discharged because of PTSD and he's having a really hard time trying to find a job. He actually knows the friend who died. Um, it was like his childhood best friend. So he goes to the funeral, reconnects with his childhood best friend's family, and then they end up asking him to help with the investigation because he was like a cop in the army, I think. I don't know. Because he has so much experience with things like this, they decide to hire him and the police are on board with it. So they're kind of like all working together at this point, but the family is like funding it. He's tasked to try to go find Casey, who's on the run. <laughs> it's very, very interesting and Casey's been on like a couple of buses so far and this older woman is sitting next to her. This isn't a spoiler, this is like in the beginning. And this older woman is sitting next to her and she kind of just dropped a bomb just now. And I was like, what? 
So I'm really enjoying it. I feel like I'm gonna fly through this one. I was a little concerned that it would be a little bit too dark for me, but it's not been so far. There is mention of blood and things at the very beginning, just in case you don't like that. I mean, who really likes that? But just so you're aware, but I'm really liking the faith aspects because Dylan, he is a stronger believer. Like his faith is very, very strong. He's like mentioning God and mentioning like Bible studies and stuff like that. So I'm interested to see how that's going to play a part as well. I'm really liking it. I'm really, really liking it. give an update on if I run. I am over halfway done. I am really loving it. Really, really loving it. <laughs> I love the story. The oscillating perspectives are so good because it like keeps you sucked in so well because the chapters are really short and things happening in one perspective and then it's like a cliffhanger and then things happening in another perspective and then it's like a cliffhanger. I feel equally as interested in both perspectives. I almost said timelines, but it's perspectives. I love Miss Lucy. Miss Lucy. Miss Lucy. You know, she's trying to talk to Casey about Jesus and in like a genuine way. And I love hearing Casey's inner dialogue about that. Like how she, normally Christians are not like Miss Lucy. And I just, I just love it. Like she, on page 85, she has this whole thing where something really, really hard has happened in Miss Lucy's life. It's awesome to see how she has like a perspective that I've been similarly walking through. Not the situation that she's walked through, but just suffering and how, how can people who know Jesus, how can you reconcile that with a God. Like if you're a Christian, how can you reconcile suffering? Like if God's all loving, he's all good, why does he allow all this to still happen? Casey says, how do you get through something like this? My faith in Jesus. She says, faith, I ask, even when things go went so wrong. This is a fallen world, honey. She says, I look at her. What does that mean, fallen? She gives me a surprised look and then her face softens. When Adam and Eve committed that first sin, all hell broke loose, literally. The curse on, on humanity from then on was pretty much that we got what we chose and some people choose evil. So God doesn't have control over it? I just seriously want to know. Oh, he has control, but Satan is the prince of this world. Still, he can't do anything without God's permission. The first chapter of Job proves that. I'll skip down a little bit. My faith is, is in Jesus, not in the way human beings behave. And I know this is not all there is. Someday he'll wipe away all my tears. <sighs> yes, he will. There's another quote that I really want to read. It's Miss Lucy. She says, evil just exists in the world. It will be repaid, but not yet. The devil gets his way sometimes, but it won't last. Jesus said that the prince of this world now stands condemned. His time is short. Yes. <laughs> yes. His time is short. He already stands condemned, but in the meantime, in this waiting time, there is evil that happens. There is bad things that happen to good people. You know, good people. What is good? <laughs> Not getting into that discussion. I am loving it, but the overarching like mystery and suspense, I am just really into it. I'm really excited to continue. We have been sick all this week. So it's been like one person, I, in my last vlog, I mentioned my daughter was sick, I got sick, then my husband got sick, and then my other daughter got sick. So we've had a sick week, um, but that's okay. We've been resting and trying to not lose our minds. <laughs> if I'm being honest with you, it's been a little bit of a struggle. So moms still don't get full on rest, at least in this stage of life with toddlers and babies and little girls little children you know hello <laughs> um hey so i am like 75 percent of the way in and i know this is a short book 
but I just I'm enjoying it so much and I just wanted to say real quick that there's like a second mystery that gets introduced around this time and I love it. I love it and I'm like, what you gonna do girl? <laughs> I'm really, really enjoying this. I really love the genuine faith content. It feels really real. It doesn't feel cheesy. I love it. I kind of have a feeling and I think maybe I heard from someone that this like main mystery doesn't get wrapped up till the end of the third book I'm assuming not the mystery but like the story of what's happening but maybe this little mystery not little but the second mystery introduced will I hope <laughs> also today is Saturday we are going to my grandpa's house with like one side of my family we're gonna do Easter with them it's the weekend before Easter and so that'll be fun I might see if I can show you anything um, but I might just enjoy the time with family so but I really want to finish this book today and let you know about it soon <music> I finished if I run that's the word that's the title I am feeling really tired after this last week anyways I need to go get creamer that's why I'm in my car because <laughs> I forgot to get creamer but I did finish if I run I don't have it with me but oh my gosh it was so good and there is a little part at the end where she's talking about God listening to us it was just really, really good. I don't want to say very much about it <laughs> because like, I don't want to spoil anything. It is like a suspense mystery novel, but if you like suspense and mystery, I definitely recommend this book. I'm pleasantly surprised. Honestly, when I first saw this, I think it was actually a long time ago, but I just had no interest because I was like, eh, a Christian mystery book? I don't know. That was back in my... <laughs> That was back in the day, but this book, I don't know. I just loved it. And I'm wanting, I'm like itching to go pick up the second book. But the bookstore that has this series in stock is closed right now. Can't do that today. I think I'm giving it five stars. And I cannot wait to pick up the next one. So really excited. My prediction about like not everything's going to get wrapped up in this first book was correct but that's okay like I'm excited to continue the story um I don't feel annoyed by that and in fact one of the mysteries did get solved so I'm very 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 happy about the way that that all went down if you've read it you know what I mean I'm just excited I'm just excited but I <laughs> y'all I have not been sure about what this vlog is gonna be but I like YouTube searched on here <laughs> Christian mysteries or Christian cozy mysteries and I do think I want to do a dedicated Christian cozy mystery or like just a clean cozy mystery vlog 
but I saw one called Invisible um, by Lorena McCourtney. It's an Ivy Malone mystery. This looks funny to me. <laughs> Ivy Malone is an older woman. She is a, I don't, can't remember what they're called, a geriatric sleuth. I don't think they call it that, but like an older, older woman sleuth. Someone who was telling about this book was saying that it's really funny, that she really loved Ivy, the main character, and she just gets up to all kinds of trouble. And y'all, over here on this channel, we love to see an old woman sleuth. Okay, there's something about that. There's something that I just genuinely, absolutely adore, okay? Usually they're funny, they're feisty, a little bit sassy. They just do things because they're old. Because <laughs> they don't care about what people think. And I think that's what I love about it so much. So I went on my Libby app to see if they had it. And they have the first one. So I downloaded it. It's on my Kindle. I started reading it. I'm not very far into it. I'm only 6% in. I'm on page 22. But I'm flying through it. Like I could sit here and just like fly, fly, fly. So I'm very, very excited. I think I'm just going to read this for this vlog and let you know. Hopefully it doesn't go downhill. I'm just really hopeful. <laughs> Because if we can find some clean mysteries, y'all, that's, I love mysteries. I love them. I like to puzzle piece things together and figure things out. Um, that's just something in my brain. I love it. Much less like not just clean, but Christian, I would just love it if I could find a series that I like. So there's an old man walking behind my car. I hope he doesn't see him just sitting in my car. I think he usually turns back. Yeah, he turns back every day. This man walks every day a really far ways in my neighborhood. <laughs> and every day he stops at my house and turns back. So anyways, so it's been a few months ago, but I started to read a cozy mystery series that I really had really loved previously. And nothing was like overtly bad necessarily, but I don't know. I feel like these days... <laughs> The content that I can intake is so small. I don't know. I don't know how to say it. Some people might think I'm a prude. That's fine. <laughs> I'm honestly not trying to sit here being like, oh, it says that bad word. I can't read it. But genuinely, it affects my heart. I feel like Jesus is so close to me. <laughs> and he is. And he's close to everyone who know him. Um, it's just our perception that's wrong and our sin that hides him from us but I don't want to put anything in between us does that make sense that's really what it's about I don't want to put anything in between us and so if there's any content that's like eh, I think this would pull me away from Jesus I'm like no it's not worth it to me so that's why I'm on a journey to find clean slash Christian fiction that I like and enjoy and are actually good stories not like super duper cheesy although I do like cheese I will say that I do like some cheese sometimes I'm just on a journey with you you're along for the ride on my YouTube channel okay <laughs> so I'm gonna go get creamer because I really want coffee right now and we ran out yesterday so oh hey it's me again <laughs> Um, I decided to go into Lowe's really quick. There's a Lowe's right by my Target. I really want to get like a little hanging plant for right by my kitchen sink because there's a little hook for a little plant. And I've been thinking about it. So let's just try to go find something. I don't know if we'll be able to. hanging plant that wasn't too heavy. The little hook is really, really small, you know? I don't want to overwhelm it, but I did find this little guy. It's so cute. Isn't it just so cute? 
and I need to find a little hanging basket or something to put this inside of. Um, just really lightweight. And then I also got this fern. <laughs> it's a love fern <laughs> for our front porch because I really want to make our front porch better. You know, in my mind is to make it green. You know what I mean? Bring some flowers, bring some plants. So got these. Now I forgot my wallet. Thankfully, Lowe's takes Apple Pay, but I don't think Target does, so I might have to just go to Starbucks, oh well, to get some coffee, because I am getting a little bit of a headache. Um, Starbucks has a lavender latte now? I knew they had the lavender matcha situation, but I didn't real like, I didn't put it together that that was a new flavor <laughs> for like lattes and such. I will say, I like it, but it's not as good as other places that I've had. But finally, Starbucks has lavender. I feel like it took them forever to get this flavor. Like it's been a thing for so many years and, but now they have it, you know? Something really quite sad happened in this book. In Invisible, I'm reading Invisible. <laughs> Something really sad happened <laughs> in the third chapter and I wasn't expecting it. I really was not expecting it. So I didn't read the description of this book and I need to go check and see if it's in the description. Maybe I'll do that right now. So it doesn't actually specifically say what is that in the synopsis. So I'm not going to spoil it, but I want to say it because <laughs> I'm like, whoa, that was unexpected and not bad. Just kind of like, like I legit teared up in one of these scenes. <laughs> in a cozy mystery. So I'm really hoping that the tone doesn't change in this book. I really am hopeful that it won't because it is really funny. You never know. Oh. Look at my heart. I love it. This is so amazing. It's really bright and my hair is crazy and my phone is going off. I just got my nails done and they look so good in my opinion. I don't know if you can see them. <laughs> We're having a purple moment. I haven't done my nails in a year and it feels so good to get a little, little bit of pampering. It feels so, so nice to just have my nails done, you know? There's just something about that sometimes. Um, I took a break because it is expensive. Sometimes it's worth it, but. So today's Tuesday, my girls are at school and I be looking rough. <laughs> Oh well. Oh, by the way, I went to Half Price Books. I didn't take you. I just went. And look what I found. I was completely not expecting this. Like I wasn't even looking for it because I didn't even like think that this was a possibility. Look at that. Look at this moment we're having with the nails and the purple on this book. You probably can't even see it. I am on chapter 15 about almost 50% of the way through. I am truly, truly loving this book. Like I love it. I love Ivy. I will say it's kind of sad. <laughs> Not like depressing sad, but just she's kind of alone in her life. And I think that's going to change because I looked up this author and then like other series she has and Ivy Malone continues after I think like five books. Um, she continues, but with someone else. So I won't spoil it in case you don't want to know, but it makes me excited. And that person who she's partnered up with has been mentioned. So I still, I love it. I've been laughing out loud. I love how she will like process things with the Lord too. Like she'll overthink things, but then she'll, she'll say like, and then I gave it to the Lord. And I just, it just feels so refreshing to be reading this. It feels so good. I'm so happy that I found a funny, cozy mystery that is Christian. Like, I just feel like this was such a gift. And I, I saw this book, the Half Price Books, and I just felt like it was from God. <laughs> I just felt like it was just a little gift from the Lord. Like, here you go. Here you go, honey. You know what I mean? I wanted to say also, God is so good. Like, this is kind of random, but God is so good. <laughs> like, I have been praising the Lord. I've been seeking him. But it's been a really hard season. It's been just a hard season with life and things and like trying to figure out 
we're not going to our church anymore we're trying to figure that out which i might share eventually more but right now it's just it's been a lot and it's been a lot of hurt a lot of hurt to everyone in our community we're kind of gathering with some of the people out of our church but it's been complicated it's been a lot of emotions it's just been a lot and so this morning i was like i'm just i was getting my girls ready and i was like i'm just gonna turn on pandora to bethel worship because your girl loves bethel worship say what you want about bethel i love their worship music i don't really listen to their preaching very much but but i love that station on pandora because i'm 98 years old and still listen to pandora okay okay that was from my college days and it just has never gone away never it's just stuck okay i do have apple music but i'm not a what is it spotify i'm not a spotify girly i'm just not i don't know anyways i was listening to an elevation song actually and all of a sudden i was literally like gathering things to take downstairs to get ready for my girls school and all of a sudden i just felt the holy spirit just come on me like not that he goes away hopefully you know what i'm saying it's like i felt him his presence his joy and like i just had to kneel down and worship because i was just like overcome by god like the goodness of the lord you know and just he is here he is with me and he gave me a little joy boost you know what i'm saying because he knew that i needed it and he is good and i didn't even ask for it this morning but he gives us what we need even when we don't know that's what we need i forgot about this <laughs> do some asmr <laughs> okay i'm just blabbering on so let's go be productive okay let's turn on Pandora! Okay, let's focus my face a little bit more. I completely forgot <laughs> to tell you the synopsis of this book. And the back is so cute. And I know, you know, reading reading synopses is kind of boring sometimes. But this one is so cute. So bear with me. Meet Ivy Malone, an inconspicuous older woman who has a mutant curiosity gene that, land, that often lands her in trouble. Unlike most women her age, she snoops and pries her gray-haired self into one hilarious escapade after another. So when vandals romp through the local cemetery, Ivy can't help but put her snooping eyes to work as she launches her own unofficial investigation. Despite her unconventional sleuthing, Ivy soon becomes discouraged by her failure to turn up any solid clues. But after she witnesses something ominous and unexplained, she can't resist putting her investigative powers to work again. Even the authorities' attempts to keep her out of danger and her nosy neighbor's matchmaking schemes can't slow Ivy down. <laughs> but will the determination that fuels this persistent spunky sleuth threaten her very safety? Colleen Coble, I've never read a Colleen Coble book, but she blurbed it. She said, I laughed out loud. McCourtney's charming mystery debuts a voice both enchanting and startling. <laughs> so, uh, yeah, that's the synopsis. It's so good. Okay, back to regularly scheduled programming. I need to sit here and read this. I've just been worshiping the Lord. <laughs> I've just been worshiping today and getting ready. Got myself together. It's the same day as you just saw in the last clip. I just got myself together. Look at my nails. Are you gonna focus on my nails, on my nails, on my nails? <laughs> Anyways, but okay. Stop talking, Lauren, and get to reading. I just have to say, I love Ivy. <laughs> first of all. And I also love Detective Dixon. He has like come onto the scene to like take care of something that's been going on. I won't spoil it because the back doesn't say anything about it. So I don't want to spoil anything, but I do want to let you know that this book does have death 
in it. So I've heard that sometimes Christian mysteries are basically just mysteries <laughs> of like happenings around the town or letters found or items found and you're trying to figure out what who it belongs to, all the things, you know? Some of them aren't about death, but I do want to let you know that that's in this one. I really just love Detective Dixon. I love Ivy and Dixon's relationship. He's younger and it's not romantic, but it's like a grandma situation and she's like talking about the Lord with him. The theme of like suffering is in this book as well. It kind of reminds me of the conversations that Casey had with Miss Lucy in the book I just read. So I'm just really, really liking it. I'm really loving the character growth as well of Ivy. You know, at the beginning I was like, I don't know, it's sad, like she's alone, but the author's doing a really good job of creating characters you love to put around Ivy. I just, I'm just really into it. I'm really into it, like surprisingly into it. So really glad that I picked this one up. I don't know if this vlog is going out <laughs> tomorrow, which is Thursday. I had been trying to do Thursday uploads, but you might be seeing this on Saturday. <laughs> I'm taking it easy on myself. And I did read two books in this vlog. I've been really slow in my reading, which I've been wanting to do, but because I'm slower, you know, it's just not suitable for like quick vlogging, but I'm not going to try to rush myself to get this out. I just want to enjoy this book because I am enjoying it so much. One more thing though, Ivy calls herself an LOL and it stands for little old lady. And so she'll be like, this LOL, <laughs> like getting all in Detective Dixon's business. She's trying to figure out if he has a girlfriend. He's tr she's trying to play matchmaker and ugh, I just love her. I love her so much. Okay, that's all. I'm filming on my phone because I don't have my camera right now and, but I got a package. So I hope the quality doesn't shift too drastically, but just bear with me, okay? I got a package. So I think I know what this is. At first I was like, what is that? But then I remembered. So I'm gonna open this. Baby, oh, there it goes. Yep. Aw. You're gonna love Courtney. I just know it. Send me all your thoughts. Love you. From Keisha. Keisha, Keisha, Keisha. My phony Valentine by Courtney Walsh. Oh my gosh. Keisha, thank you so much. So this is a romance that, okay, so Courtney Walsh, I just learned this, I think from Keisha. I don't know. I don't know who I was talking to because <laughs> I've been talking about Courtney Walsh quite a bit with different people, but Courtney Walsh used to write Christian romance, Christian fiction, I think, but then she decided to become self-published and has been extremely successful in that endeavor. So this is one, I think it's kind of grumpy sunshine. There's a sassy grandma. Y'all already know from this vlog that I love sassy grandmas. Um, it says a chance meeting, a hunky hockey player, a fake romance, hardly an ordinary day in the life of Poppy Hart. Courtney Walsh is completely clean. I don't know if she uses swear words. I don't think she uses swear words. Could be wrong about that, but definitely like no sex scenes and minimal kissing. I have heard. I'm just interested to try it, but this book is so cute. Um, they're faceless. So LOL, Jordan, <laughs> but thank you so much, Keisha. I love you. Thank you so much. Okay. <laughs> I finished Invisible and I just really, really loved this book. I am so happy to have found a Christian cozy mystery. Who would have thunk? You know, who would have thunk? And it was actually really good in my opinion. I really enjoyed it. I had a blast reading it. I love Ivy. I really love 
Detective Dixon. I will say there are some things that were kind of rushed towards the end in regards to him. There were parts of it that it didn't drag. That's not the right word. And I was still interested the whole time. But there were definitely parts that I was like, I am loving, 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 loving this book. And then there were parts of like, yeah, it's, I'm having a fine time. <laughs> like, you know what I'm saying? But I loved it. Like, definitely highly recommend. The very end did seem like she was trying to wrap things up too quickly with certain like relational aspects of the story in regards to like personal lives of the characters. But I am really excited to see what happens in the next ones because I do want to continue on in the series. I just wanted to say, in case you don't know what a cozy mystery is, it's usually like a small town setting or like a like a neighborhood or something like that with kind of quirkier characters, hence Ivy. <laughs> and like her neighbor is like really nosy and funny. I was laughing out loud, by the way, like a lot in this book, <laughs> unexpectedly. So Cozy Mysteries, usually violence is off page. So like there might be a dead body in a Cozy Mystery, but you don't actually see the violence, if that makes sense. So like I said in my other clip, I wasn't sure what this one was about. Like I wasn't sure if there would be a murder or if it was gonna be just more of like a, a mystery. Like in the very beginning of the book, I think it's in the synopsis, there's been like vandalism at a cemetery. And I thought, okay, well that's just what this book's gonna be about. Well, no, I mean, yes, but then also there's a murder. It just continues. And I really like the way that the mystery was interwoven and connected and you figure out who people are and it's just, it was just really good. It was interesting. There were a few things that were a little bit interesting. Ivy is a Christian and her best friend Thea was a Christian but most of the people around her aren't, which is fine. Like I actually really enjoyed those conversations and like talking about it and stuff. Her neighbor starts talking about like vibes and vibrations and like um, very like new age stuff. And then Ivy starts talking about it later on in the book of like, I'm picking up on Magnolia's vibe of whatever. And I'm like, why, why are you doing that? Um, so I don't know if like, I don't know if that will continue on in the series. But I will say that did bother me a little bit. But that didn't get too heavy, I guess, on like the description of all that. What am I saying? I don't know what I'm even saying anymore. But those comments weren't often. They were very few and far between. She does quote 1 Peter 5, 7 in this book. Okay? 1 Peter 5, 7 says, Cast all your anxieties on me because I care for you. And that is the verse that the Lord like blasted me with his love last year. I had a lot of fun doing this. I'm excited to try out some other genres in the Christian fiction world. I feel like what's coming next is possibly romance. Not sure. <laughs> Not sure. It could be romance. It could be Francine Rivers. You just never know. Which is romance, I guess. Right? I've been itching to reread The Mark of the Lion and also Redeeming Love. I also could read other ones that I haven't read before. I don't know. Do you have an opinion? Let me know down below. What would you like to see me read? Do you have any recommendations of Christian fiction or clean fiction, clean mysteries, or um, just like lighter mysteries? Because I can't handle dark things. I just can't. You let me know what you want to see me read and I just might do it, you know? Overall, we had a good time. We read some really good books. I'm so, so glad that I picked up If I Run and I'm also so glad I picked up Invisible. This was such a successful little reading vlog. So I hope you enjoyed and found some new series that I wanted to keep on going with. So that's exciting too. Let me know what you are reading if you're enjoying it. Let me know if you've read either of these books and I will see you in my next video. Bye. I'm just now looking at reviews of this book and it's either like 
two stars or five stars. <laughs> Which makes sense. There are some three stars, there's a one star. <laughs> the only mystery here is how this got published. <laughs> Honestly, that's funny. I guess what I'm saying is go into this knowing that some people have hated it and some people have loved it. And I'm one of those people who have loved it. So, yep, that's all. <laughs>